Hello guys and welcome to TG on the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. Last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and went through the 3 door, leaving pretty much everyone behind. Well, not everyone, but Clover and Lotus got left behind, as well as Ace, of course. And we are in the shower room now, where Snake's body is. In this episode, we are going to make our way through the shower room. We helped June calm down after she... Uh, you know, she started panicking a lot after seeing Snake's body, which I don't blame her in the slightest. I mean, this is a murder mystery game, so it's sort of expected for us, but for a person who has just completely just been plopped down into this situation, it must be incredibly tough. So we're just gonna see if we can get through this room quickly, and first thing we're gonna do is there's a lot here on this first screen we have of course the blood from snake but that's not all in red letters we have llr we're gonna go ahead and keep that in mind for now if we turn to the right we have these bathroom stalls up top here we have some toilet paper it's toilet paper with some kind of red symbols on it you think maybe that's a side tail cipher side tail cipher what the hell is that you wrap a piece of paper around a stick and then write several sentences on it, so that the whole paper is filled up. Then you unwrap the paper and you can't tell what the original message was, right? That's how it works, more or less. Then to decipher it, you gotta have a stick that's the same diameter as the original one. Same diameter as the original one, huh? Yeah. Then you just wrap the paper around the stick and you can read the code. If we wrap the toilet paper around a stick or something, maybe... The toilet paper. Someone said I should wrap it around a stick. That's not the only thing up here, though. We have a wooden box. There's something in here. We have luminol. This is, of course, liquid. This is, of course, something used to find traces of blood that have since been erased, and we're going to go ahead and use that in a bit. What the hell is this thing? Some kind of spray bottle? There's something written on it. Lumen... Can't read anything else. The label's all faded. Let me see that. He just grabbed it from him. That wasn't very nice. Oh, this is luminol. You know, forensics guys use it at a crime scene. Oh yeah, that stuff glows blue when you spray it on blood. Even if the blood's been wiped off, it'll still glow. It's luminol. You can use it to detect blood. So we move back, and you'll remember how there was this bloody writing right over here. If we go ahead and check the wall, we want to go ahead and spray it with this luminol. Wait, you don't really think we're supposed to use the luminol here, do ya? Yeah, it does seem kind of weird to use it here, but maybe I should try it just in case. And uh, for those of you who don't, don't know, in order to see luminol, you have to turn the lights off. So we have, in this sort of Going up, down, up and down, up and down, we have LLR, LRL. So, keeping this in mind, we want to go ahead and move to the left right here. If we open this up this panel, we have these different valves that move, that we can turn into different directions. If we go ahead and use the code that we saw earlier, left, left, right, left, right, left. Well, I did what it said on the wall. I wonder if there's an, I wonder if it actually did anything. Hey, this drain's acting up. What the hell did you do? I just messed with the valves a little, nothing big. We move over, over to the left. This thing's completely flooded. There must be water flowing through the pipe on the right. There's water pouring out of the drain. Get a blue key card. It's the blue key card. This is, um, the symbol for Mercury, isn't it? There was an elevator right outside of the big hospital room. I think the same symbol was on the card reader next to it. That's right. I guess that means we're not supposed to use this card in this, in this room. Um, do you really think so? You don't think maybe we need it for this room and for the elevator? Just like the keys before it. That's a blue key card. I don't really think you need to worry about the Mercury symbol part right now. Blue key card. Anyways, that's completely dealt with for now. We want to go ahead and move right back to this stall over here because there's some stuff that's actually inside the stall. Uh, we have this bucket, which is pretty awesome. It's a tin bucket. 
Hey Jumpy, do you remember back in elementary school when you spilled all of our paint across the whole classroom? They made you clean it up and all they gave you was a sponge and a bucket like this. Hey, come on now, can we just leave the past in the past? It's a tin bucket. It's a tin bucket. I told you, Jumpy, it's a bucket! You could probably put hot water in it from, from the shower in it. Tin bucket. June says I could pu put hot water from the shower in it. I think it's very funny how June sort of does the narration for that, and not really narration, but the words for the whatever you call it, the item descriptions, and she gets very impatient each time Jumpy, uh, or Junpei, excuse me. I'm not close enough with him to call him Jumpy. But, <laughs> but yeah, I love how she gets impatient with him. Maybe I could use the shower here to fill the bucket with hot water. Hey Seven, could you turn on the shower? I'm gonna put the bucket under the head. Uh, okay, sure thing. Bucket filled with hot water. It's filled with hot water. Try not to spill it, okay? It, it's heavy! Okay, okay, I'll carry it. If we dump this hot water over it, then we might be able to wash the dirt off. Dirt? The bucket's filled with hot water. June said something about washing dirt off. Don't know what that means. Uh, so, what we want to do is we want to take this bucket, and I think we want to move it over here to another stall. If we look in here, hey, there's a screwdriver. It's a screwdriver. We can unscrew things with this. Was there something that we needed to unscrew somewhere? Screwdriver. It can unscrew things. Intense. Intense? What the... I don't know. We do have to do something with the hot water. Do we pour it in here? Alright, so I just pour the hot water into this tank and... Looks like you filled it. Now you should be able to flush it, right? There's probably a handle somewhere on the tank that you can pull. You think so? Serious? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Is it somewhere in here? What gotta do now is pull the handle. Which part of this is the handle again? Let's flush the hot water. Okay, you need to click on it again. Well, there it goes, just like the toilet should work. If we open it up, before, there would have been some, like, tar here, or I guess dirt it would be, but now, it reveals the message 185 equals. So, we're gonna go ahead and keep that in mind, just 185 equals. Uh, I actually, I completely missed something. We want to go back into the bathroom stall and click this broom. Junpei reached for the broom, and as he grabbed it, he heard a soft voice from behind him. It was June. The rabbit hutch. Huh? He turned around. June still looked sadly pale, but there was a smile on her face. Oh, you just reminded me of it. The rabbit hutch, I mean. How did I remind you of something like that? Jumpy in the broom. You were always playing around with the broom in front of the rabbit hutch. I was? Don't you remember? Junpei stared at the broom in his hand. You mean, you don't remember that summer either? She looked very sad. He shook his head. Of course I remember. How could I forget something like that? It was terrible. And they were in the sixth grade. And Junpei and Jun had been assigned to take care of the classroom pets, the rabbits. And their chief duty was to clean the hutches every morning. On the final day of school before summer vacation began, Junpei overslept. He rushed to school and found Jun standing in front of the rabbit hutches. No sooner had Junpei arrived than Jun began to cry. He had no idea why until he looked behind her into the rabbit hutch. And the first thing he saw was blood. The hutch was filled with the dead bodies of the rabbits. Even after their teachers and friends came to see what the commotion was, June couldn't stop crying. I just kept crying and crying until you came over. You held my hand and you looked very serious and you said, Don't cry. I'm going to catch the person who did this. After you told me that, I finally stopped crying. Well, the real fun started after you quit crying. You told me we were going to catch the killer together. <laughs> June smiled, and a little of the flush of life returned to her cheeks. Then we decided that we'd ambush them. Yeah, I remember. The school also kept roosters and guinea pigs. Junpei and June had decided the murderer would likely return to finish off the rest of the animals. 
They would ambush the killer at night. Junpei and Jun hid behind the hutch at dusk and waited. It was a warm summer night. The quiet sound of crickets whispered through the air. As the sun went down, the stars began to wink at them from the sky. In Jun's, Akane Kurashiki's face. That night was something Junpei knew he would never forget as long as he lived. But the murderer never showed up. We waited for them all summer vacation and they never showed up. Yeah, but the animals didn't get attacked either. I think all that work amounted to something, you know? He felt the same way, but it was good to hear her say it. Although, you know, if you think about it, we were probably taking a lot more th than we could handle. What do you mean? She looked up at him, confused. Well, come on. We were just kids. If we had ever killed the rabbits that actually showed up, they would probably would have had a knife or something. I mean, you must have been pretty worried, right? I... I wasn't worried. Because you were... Because you were there with me. She blushed furiously. You know, no one else wanted to take care of the animals. Clearly embarrassed, she tried desperately to change the subject. I was the only one who asked to do it at, all, at first. Yeah, boys don't really want to bother with taking care of animals, you know. Well, yeah, but you asked to do it after I did, didn't you? Eh, if it wasn't the rabbits, they were going to make me do something else. You know how that school was. Figured it'd be better if I was working with somebody who wasn't too much of a loud mouth, right? Somebody who wasn't going to tell on me if I felt like blowing it off. Really? That's why you volunteered? Yeah, yeah it is. He nodded quickly and much too earnestly, and then quickly looked away at something very important. That hadn't been the reason, of course. He had asked to take care of the rabbit so that he could be near June. But it had been so long ago, he couldn't bring himself to tell her how he'd felt back then. It would be... embarrassing. He took a quick breath to clear his head, tossed the broom up, and then snatched it out of the air. Well... We don't really have time to be walking down memory lane like this, you know? I've got to figure out a way out of this room. Otherwise... Yes! Jun nodded curtly, then turned and walked away. Junpei turned around and looked at the room. It's Snake's body. Chunks of flesh and organs still lay on the floor. The conversation he and Jun had been having scarcely fit their surroundings. But perhaps that was simple human nature. Despite such a situation, or perhaps because of it, the mind turned to the farthest thing from death that I could find. Still, Junpei couldn't help but feel a twinge of guilt at wanting so desperately to live when Snake lay dead before him. He had to live. He wanted a life again. A life with June in it. As he stared at the clumps of blackened flesh, all Junpei could think of was how much he wanted to live. a very good scene. I like it a lot. Hmm? What are you doing with the broom? You know, if you look at it real close, you can see it's got these lines cut in that sort of spiral spiral up with a shaft. A broom. Has no has lines cut in it that spiral up the shaft. Seven earlier was talking a lot about how if you take the toilet paper and put it on the stick, you could probably find a secret message. Hmm. What if I wrap the toilet paper around the broom? Oh, so you wrapped the toilet paper around the broom, huh? Looks like the symbols line up perfectly. It says six, 634 plus. So keep that in mind. So 634 plus on the toilet paper. So we've got 634 plus, and in this second stall we had 185 equals. So if, uh, just for a moment, we're going to go ahead and check the... What was it? Do I have my... Do I not have my calculator in escape rooms? Because it's not in the file. Huh. It's funny how in the one part where the calculator is pretty useful, we can't really use it. Anyways, we're just going to keep those numbers in mind. 634 plus 185 equals. And uh, we'll just come back to that a little bit later. We're going to go ahead and take the screwdriver now. There's something that we haven't examined yet other than the door over there. But we have this thing right up here. The thermometer was screwed onto the wall. That meant that Junpei needed to take the screws out with the screwdriver. 
While he was so engaged, Santa suddenly spoke. Hey, Junpei. You know why thermometers only go up to 107 degrees Fahrenheit or 75 degrees Celsius like this one? Junpei answered without taking his eyes off the screw. No, can't say I've ever thought about that. At 100 to se at 107 degrees, the cells in the human body start to die, and the organs begin to shut down. The proteins in your cells start to harden. It's like when you hard boil an egg. Even if you cool it down afterwards, it won't go back to being a raw egg. In other words, it's dead. That's why thermometers don't go past 107. There's no point. Why did Santa brought that up, Junpei wondered. Oh uh, yeah? He continued to work at the screw. But it's pretty rare for a fever to get that high. Even viruses and stuff don't usually drive the body temperature up to 107. Of course, there are other external things that could. Like what? Well, let's see. Something like getting locked in a sauna, or getting thrown into an incinerator and burnt and burnt to death. <laughs> yeah, I guess that would get a little hotter than 107 degrees Fahrenheit. Junpei gave a short, barking laugh. A moment later, the screw fell off. With a small tug, Junpei pulled the thermometer from the wall. All right, got it. He looked up and saw Santa glaring at the blank section of the wall. Huh? What's up? Nothing. Forget about it. Santa spun around and walked off, away from Junpei. But as Junpei watched him go, he didn't look angry. He looked very, very sad. Got the thermometer! Oh, you took the thermometer off. It says open at the bottom of the gauge. I wonder what it means. Maybe when it gets hot, something will open. The thermometer says open at the bottom of the gauge. So we need something very hot. If we go back to the showers over here. Did not mean to click that. Yeah, if I can get this hot water on the thermometer, then maybe. All right, thermometer, let's get this party started. Yep, looks like it's doing the trick. There goes the gauge. Now it's at the open mark. Hmm? Huh, it opened. What's this? Looks like there's a piece of paper in here. 957 plus. 957 plus. That means you're supposed to add something to 957, doesn't it? Yeah, it doesn't take a genius to figure that out. The problem is what to add. Well, we already know what to add paper from the thermometer it says 957 plus so pull go ahead and pull out your calculators people 957 plus 634 plus 185 equals get 1776 the year the United States of America was founded uh, so we just keep that number in mind if we go into this third stall which we haven't even checked out yet we check inside the toilet there might be something in the tank you know let's open that shit up we get a red key card. It's a red card. Probably a key card. Do you remember if you saw a card reader anywhere around here? The red key card. So go ahead and move back. We finally want to go ahead and look at the door to leave here. If you look at the at the stuff right here, it has two locks, one red, one blue, and then a key pad for a four-digit number. Thankfully, think. Yeah, thankfully we have all of that. The light's on, Jumpy. And you need to insert the key cards in order. If you don't put it in order, it won't work. Great job, Jumpy. Both of the lights are on now. Now you just need to put in the password. Both lights are on. We should be able to enter the password now. What's with these E and C keys? E means enter and C means clear, I think. So after you put in the password, hit E. If you screw it up, hit C. I don't get why Junpei is so confounded each time we use a keypad with the fact that C equals clear and E equals enter, especially since we went through the four door where we had to use a keypad in the kitchen area. Either way, we open up the door. And that is going to be the end of this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!